thanks for coming. And again, I'm sorry I can't be there with you personally for this occasion. But here now is Follow Me Ball. The hope rises again, and the dream lives on. I'm here every morning and ask myself, if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I am about to do? Do you have the same uh, cancer that Ted Kennedy had? Yes. Unfortunately, referring to last published statistics, the rate of mortality in globe is about 10 million people each year. This is nothing in comparison with the rate of diagnosis for each gender. One more time. Now I want to ask all of the women in this room to please take a look to your right. Now take a look to your left. One of the three of you will have cancer in your lifetime. Now I want to ask Nick to please take a look to your right. And that's all you need to do. One of the two of you will have cancer in your lifetime. Don't be afraid, you're not gonna die. Just follow my lead. I'm Sahel Nurikuluri, a polymer engineer, and this is Cancer Vibe, Life with Cancer. Let's start from the beginning of this battle. During World War I, one of the weapons of war was a poisonous yellow cloud called mustard gas. For those unlucky enough to be exposed, it made their impossible to breathe and harm the body. This lead, and a scientist tried desperately to develop an antidote for this weapon of war. During the process, they discovered the gas was damaging the bone marrow soldiers which share the same characteristics with cancer cells. Both replicate rapidly. So the question is that, could a weapon of war become a champion in the fight against cancer? It took time and trial and error. And by the end of World War II, scientists discovered the first chemotropic drugs. This medicine contained compounds that could cause some level of harm to all cells of our body, even the, the healthy ones. This leads to several common side effects of chemotherapy, including hair loss, fatigue, and nausea. Something's wrong here. We need a change, because what we do in medicine is to send out firefighters, because the cancer is like a big fire. And our firefighters are our cancer drugs but we're sending them out without a fire truck. So without transportation, without ladders, and without emergency equipment. And over 99% of our cancer drugs and our firefighters never make it to the fire. Over 99% of our cancer drugs never make it to the tumor. I'm here to tell you that nanoparticles are the fire drugs that we've been looking for. We can put our cancer drug inside the nanoparticle and they can behave as a carrier to bring our cancer drug to the heart of the tumor. What are these nanoparticles and what does it really mean to be nano-sized? To imagine, I want you to consider a diameter of a hair and divide it to 10 power 5 and you get to the size of one nanometer. The game of science has different rules when we play in nano scale. But if we know these rules and learn how to play, we can manipulate their properties and make them behave the way we want them to do. So let's think, when we swallow a pill, what happens? I want you to think of it as a video game for our character, Mr. Fireman. Ready to play? Mr. Fireman needs to face three challenges. The matter of size, degrading problem, and targeting purposes. To overcome these challenges and not to lose and win the game, we need to equip Mr. Fireman. So first, we gave him a fire truck. Then, to, look, to fool the liver, we can use our body's own nanoparticles. Yes, surprise, 
Surprise! We have nanoparticles inside the saliva, blood, and urine of you, 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 and all of us. And our final strategy is to you is to equip our fire truck with a GPS, which can be achieved by surface treatment. Something's wrong here still, because what we do in medicine. Uh, is uh, in uh, these nanoparticles are not yet in clinical use and it takes at least an average of 12 years to get something from lab to your medicine cabinet and it's hard to see the future when we are in the middle of the process but it becomes very very clear when we look backward this is the reason that I told you in the first place that I can survive.